that the mainstream media has done an exceptionally poor job in covering what actually is in the legislation. Senator Bernie Sanders called out the media and CNN host Brianna Keeler did not like that one bit. So I'll have her segment coming up here in a minute and I'll break that down. But first, here is how it all started. So on October 14th, Bernie Sanders was on CNN on Anderson Cooper's show discussing what is in the budget bill. In his tweet here, he goes on to say, they want us to lower prescription drug costs. They want the wealthy to pay their fair share. We cannot let big farmers, lobbyists, and the millions of dollars of dishonest ads from the ruling class stop us. So whenever Bernie's on any of these network shows, he always discusses what is the, the details of what is in the bill and how that will actually help people. Meanwhile, the media's coverage largely does not do that. I pointed that out in a quote tweet that same day saying, truly amazing that CNN will have on Bernie Sanders to say this and then literally never reference any of it during their discussions on policy fights within Congress. Well, maybe, maybe Bernie saw my tweet <laughs> because later on that day, he put out this statement saying, uh, news, Sanders' statement on why Americans don't know what's in the Build Back Better plan, going on to largely blame the media, saying here the reality that uh, uh, the reality is that the mainstream media has done an exceptionally poor job in covering what actually is in the legislation. So, of course, the media hates being criticized. Now, I understand if they're being called fake news, you know, everything they put out is fake news. Yes, you should be angry about that. You should criticize that. But oftentimes there are correct criticisms of the media. This is one of them. But Media figures uh, came out, like Maggie Haberman, New York Times here, saying it's always the press's fault and never the fault of the people communicating something. That's just 101. Now, to her point, yes, the Democratic leadership, people like Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden, could be doing a better job at communicating with what is in the budget bill for sure. But the media is also at fault here. And the media is largely what people consume. People don't normally consume the exact words of Nancy Pelosi or, or Chuck Schumer. They, it's filtered through the media. So if the media isn't covering it properly, isn't covering what is in the legislation, then that's going to impact people. And it's not even just about the details of, you know, point by point what's in the bill. It's how does that impact people? So CNN constantly talks to Trump supporters and how they feel about things. How about talking to a mother who can't afford to go back to work because she can't afford uh, child care for, for her child and in the legislation includes child care and universal pre-K or talk to a, a, a senior who can't afford um, uh, teeth, who can't afford dental, Medicare, dental expansion, vision, hearing is in the budget bill. So these are ways you can connect these provisions to actual people's lives. The media has the ability to do that with their resources. People like CNN or places like CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, they have the ability to talk to real people and see how this sort, these sorts of things would actually improve their lives. But instead of using the resources to do that, they talk mostly about the drama, about, oh, mansion or, or progressives versus the moderates, so-called moderates, when they're really just corporate tools. And in reality, it's the entire Democratic Party versus two senators. But... You know, that's largely their discussion is is the drama fight and not really about the uh, what is actually in the bill. So here's where we get to Brianna Keeler. So she came out with this segment today complaining about Bernie Sanders is criticism. Senator Bernie Sanders put out a statement this weekend blaming the media as the main reason for why Americans don't know what's in the Build Back Better plan. He wrote, quote, at the top of the list is the reality that the mainstream media has done an exceptionally poor job in covering what actually is in the legislation. There have been endless stories about the politics of passing Build Back Better, the role of the president, the conflicts in the House and Senate, the opposition of two senators, the size of the bill, and very limited coverage as to what the provisions of the bill are and the crises for working people that they address. Let's take a look at what all he is saying here, because while the media should always be striving to do a better job, it's just not true that the media hasn't covered what is in the bill and doesn't continue to do so. Media outlet after media outlet has covered this, and it's very easy to find online if you want to know about it. And on television, I mean, just looking at CNN, segment after segment about what is in the bill. In his statement, Sanders refers to how popular the policy provisions in the legislation are when Americans are polled about them. So that's what Democrats obviously should be selling. But one of Sanders' former colleagues, Al Franken, says Democrats could be doing a better job of that. 
There is so much in this package that, and what I don't like is when we refer to it as the reconciliation package instead of the elements of it, because the elements are so popular. We can't do it without the reconciliation package. At the end of the day, I am absolutely convinced we're going to have a strong infrastructure bill and we're going to have a great consequential reconciliation bill which addresses the needs of the American people. All right. Uh, this is so incredibly dishonest. Let me just start with the last bit of that video where there they play the clips of Bernie Sanders mentioning the infrastructure package or the, the budget bill as if that's all he talks about when he's on these network shows when they know very well he always talks about the details of what is in these bills you can go and watch the video i referenced earlier where he's on cnn here going through the details i mean he, he does this all the time so to pull out those clips it's just it shows you how dishonest they are generally about this uh, about criticisms that are legitimate of them and by the way Nancy Pelosi did the exact same thing. Pelosi grabs the media not helping sell $3.5 trillion bill. But you didn't see CNN go after her the way they're going after Bernie Sanders because CNN loves Nancy Pelosi. But when it comes to Bernie, they're always willing to, to, to attack him. So, you know, he's not the only one claiming this. And by the way, when it comes to Pelosi saying this, she actually should be criticized for this because she is the one that is not pushing the details out enough. So that's that's actually, this is a... a if the media were to, were to criticize her for this, they'd be correct. But when it comes to Bernie, he's always putting the message out. Now, a little more. So let's first dissect some of this with the help of Twitter here. So um, Brett uh, tweeting out here, they found four articles in five months, LOL. <laughs> I mean, it really is hilarious. Where, oh look, we have these four articles of what is in the bill. Cle clearly the mainstream media has been doing their job right. When the vast majority of the coverage is not this, that's the problem. But, of course, it's not just that. The clips that Brianna Keeler uh, brought up there, Olivia Little of uh, Media Matters tweets out here, the examples used for We Cover This are exactly what Bernie describes in his statement. Quote, endless stories about the politics of passing Build Back Better, the role of the president, conflicts in the House and Senate, opposition of two senators, the size of the bill, zoom in. So, she goes on here to say, of the 12 examples CNN used to defend its Build Back Better coverage, all but three are exactly what Bernie criticized in his statement. Also, we're only presented with screenshots. The actual discussion from the three segments could have been about the cost, the president, mansion, cinema, drama, etc. And of course, they are. Uh, not one here, at least based on the screenshots. And I'm sure if you go dive into these videos, it's the exact same thing. I imagine not one of them here are actually talking to real people and, and asking them, how this may impact your life. How, how would the expansion of dental, vision, and hearing, and Medicare help uh, seniors and, and talk to actual people of how that would help them? How would the expansion of the child tax credit help uh, parents? You know, you can go down the list here, the, the, the climate investments. So there are ways that they can communicate this and not just, again, listing it out, but because they are CNN and mainstream press with, you know, vast resources, they have the ability to put a reporter out and get and dive deep into these issues, which they are simply not doing. Now, the other issue here, of course, is just the complete lack of analysis when it comes to the impact of corporations on this entire policy discussion. So New York Times here breaking the news on the 15th saying the heart of President Biden's climate agenda, a push to replace coal and gas fired power plants is said to likely be cut from the budget bill because Senator Joe Manchin opposes it. Now, this was reported on. I'm sure in, in, you know, in cable news, but did they mention that Joe Manchin personally makes $500,000 a year from one of the dirtiest coal plants in West Virginia? This, these sorts of ties, these corporate ties, the, and, this is, and this isn't even just, you know, do, donations, which is one thing. This is him personally making $500,000 a year, more than twice his salary as a U.S. Senator. That obviously has an impact on him not wanting to have, you know, uh, an impact on on coal in this in this budget bill. Yet, why isn't that roped into the conversation? Because these massive cable news organizations are, of course, massive corporations. <laughs> so they want as little talk about the corporate influence as possible when discussing these policy fights, which is why they're so into the drama. And they may claim, oh, ratings. We, we got to worry about the ratings, right? Well, I tweeted this out, this comparison here. 109,000 likes. <laughs> this is my, I think, my biggest tweet of all time. All I did was screenshot these two things. So clearly, it would get the ratings. 
That can't be an excuse. They simply do not want to cover these sorts of connections. Last thing here, uh, while Brianna Keeler did not at all mention during her four minute segment what is in the budget bill, I will here, as I will do in all my videos discussing this, but here is a breakdown of what is in it, at least parts of what is in it, including the, uh, the, the how popular each of them are. So this is recent polling from Data for Progress. A majority of voters support the provisions of the Build Back Better plan. So quickly going over these here, as I've gone over this a number of times, I'm sure my you know usual viewers are sick of seeing this, but I'll do it again for the new people. Long-term care investments is a plus 67, modernizing K-12 school buildings, plus 55, electricity grid modernization, plus 58, Medicare drug price negotiation, plus 58, lower Medicare age, plus 27, universal pre-K, plus 29, tuition-free community college, plus 25, creating a, a civilian climate core, plus 28, pathway to citizenship, plus 22, and extending child tax benefits, plus 9. So everything that is in this bill is incredibly popular. How often does cable news discuss that? Now, of course, there are moments. I've even brought some of them up over the past uh, month or so about a segment here or there that are actually where you have either CNN or MSNBC actually educating people on whether, you know, the popularity of what's in the bill or what's in the bill. But that isn't the vast majority of their coverage. And that's where Bernie Sanders' criticism comes from. And on that, he is exactly right.